It's October 20th, 2018. I did my part. Your name is? <laughs> oh, my name is Emily. Hi. Good. My name is Janelle Zinner, and I'm the grandma of Emily. I'm Terry Zinner, uh, Terry Joseph Zinner, and I'm the grandpa of Emily. I'm Ann Zoe Zinner, and I'm the nanny of, of Emily. And the aunt. And the aunt. <laughs> um, my name is Joseph Killian Zinner. I am the guardian of uh, this rebellious child and the father. So uh, we've gathered here today, all the Zinners in our immediate family, to uh, tell a few old stories, some of which probably Emily has heard, a lot of which she may not have heard. So uh, we're going to kick some stories around um, and go back years a few. So my mom was uh, about to tell a story about 1929. Mm -hmm. So you want to go? Ask her, Em. Ask her to... Get us rolling. You're interviewing here. Come on, take oh. a <laughs> um, What was the story about 1929? Well, in 1929, there was a what they called a bank uh, crash. The economy uh, <clears throat> crashed because the banks were loaning out a lot of money, and the, the people that they were loaning to uh, did not have a lot of money, and uh, it just crashed. They couldn't pay for anything. Their crops uh, there was a, um, a, a dust storm uh, in, along you know, the plains, and they just, you know, it just, the whole economy crashed. So my grandpa uh, had $5,000. He had saved up as a poor little, um, little farmer, you know, in, in, in uh, Indian Bayou. And he, you know, so... They said he had it, he had the money in the bank at the uh, American Bank in Abbeville, so they t they said you better go get your money out, you know because they they uh, they the bank crashed. So he said no, that can't be. So he went to to the bank and sure enough they said, Mr. Bruce, we don't have your money. He said, what do you mean? I, I don't have any money. He said I worked hard for the money. They said, oh we know, but. We loaned it out to people, and the people didn't have money to, you know, pay us back, and so we had we called this a crash, and so he 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 just couldn't believe it, you know. He, he saved up all this money, so when he was um, of the age and he was, you know, close to death, uh, you know, he knew that he was getting old and he was getting frail, and so he gave Papa, my daddy, a um, a slip of paper, and this was his son-in-law, and he said, when uh, when I die, I want you to open it up and uh, do as it says, and so they said, okay, and he, uh, so they had said that, um, uh, you know, he said, I went to the bank, and the bank said they didn't have any money for me, so he said, I want you to do what I say on this letter, That and that, my dad didn't have any idea what he was talking about, this was his father-in-law, so uh, when he died, after the after the funeral, we came then, and he, Daddy took out the piece of paper, and there was a drawing of the the the, the room, and with the, and it had the X on different places. So Daddy went and looked under. There was, you know, ten dollars, and looked in, and sure enough, there was five thousand dollars he had secretly put around the house. Oh, wow. He never got any of his money back from the bank no. that you know of, mm -mm. not never. a penny. Mm -mm. Many, many U.S. Wow. citizens. And what do you what do you think? So, nineteen twenty nine, yes. five thousand dollars today would be worth. I have no idea. I would guess two hundred grand. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I don't know. Almost. Yeah, it was. It was. I was thinking, Joseph. Since we've lost okay. the picture, no, it's okay. It's still recording. Well, how can it record? I would, I would like it, to it, to but, see how the sound is. Unless we go through an hour and come up with, it's fine. I turn the AC off. It's as good as it's gonna get. This is the 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 speak the mic on the, on these computers as good as it gets. Okay. Okay. We should be fine. All right. Um, 
So yeah, this was a life. Five thousand dollars was a lifetime saving. It wasn't something yeah. you saved in oh, two yeah. years. That's a it lot of money. Yeah. And then yeah. so you saved another five thousand to hide all over the house. I never That's heard right. that story. Yeah. Um. So let's see. Any stories y'all can think of? I have some I wrote down here. Um. Let's see if we can keep them a little bit in order. How are they written down on the phone? Um. You write like this. It's Modern day technology. <laughs> Uh, no, you write a you can write a book without ever picking up a pencil. <coughs> Still writing. Still counts. Um, let's tell the uh, let's tell the jump off the bridge story. <laughs> All right. There was a uh, on the Skunk River, no less. Wonderful name. In Minnesota. In Genola, Minnesota. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, I had gone swimming in oftentimes. You know, maybe half a dozen times. And then I got older, and uh, nieces and nephews were of the age where they could have uh, jumped off the bridge if they had the courage to do so. Uh, so we drove, drove there one time. We had a, I don't know who specifically was along, right? Who had six kids? I don't think they were all along, but. Um, uh, were either of the girls involved in this? No, it was no Jane no. or Sue weren't involved, so it's probably the boys. It was the boys. That Mark, they were in the Jim, Dave, and Steve. Probably That's right. A combination of them. Mm -hmm. So Janelle said, "I'll give you what a quarter two, each. Two bits. I'll give you a quarter four. each if you jump in the river." And I didn't think they would do it, you know, for a quarter. And boy, they just immediately went and all jumped in the river. <laughs> With clothes on. With their clothes. They didn't have a swimsuit. By the way, did you hear him say two bits? Do you know what two bits is? Two bits is a quarter. That's why we're doing this. I love these yeah. things. Two yeah. bits is, is a, so a bit is 12 and a half cents. I don't know where that came from. Yeah. You know I don't know where that, that came from me. That was free, so, free my day. So, Mom, I'm going to go back to you on a story. What about, uh, I'm going to miss the name, but T-Bit or Little Guy. That oh, T-Bit. T-Pit. Yeah. T-Pit, was that his name? Mm -hmm. That was close. T-Pit. All dressed up for Sunday school. Oh, yeah. My, my, my dad had a, uh, a grocery store in the middle of, in, in the main store in Perry, which is south of Abbeville. And um, he, um, it was a Sunday morning, and he always opened Sunday morning uh, for people to get, uh, you know, stuff for the Sunday meal. And then they closed at, I think it was one o'clock. So T Pit comes in and he's got this nice little white suit, you know, short pants and a little line. And he said, "Oh, T Pit, you look so good." He said, "I'll give you a quarter if you if you sit down in that in that pile of uh, water right there." And without thinking, he just boom in. My his his mother was furious. <laughs> my dad didn't think he'd do it? it. He was the little boy was six years old, five six years old. My dad felt, felt terrible, you know. She said, Joe, move to him. Look, you know, look. Now she said, I have to go back and change his clothes. So were you alive then, you think? Oh, no, no. This was before alive. your time. Mm -hmm. So we're talking 1930s, late mm -hmm. 1930s. Yeah, yeah. It was right after, you know, during the stock market crash. And this was, was just so you know, your, your grandpa, your papa's store was in Perry, Louisiana. That's right. And he had the, the post office inside of his store. That's right. Because he let him build the post office inside of his store because he and was very wise his, knowing that. Well, next inside, door. Next, next door. door. Right. But I mean in the same building. Yeah, that's right. Because he knew that that meant foot traffic. That's you know, right. people had to come. People the one thing people to had to do mail, was come check their mail. They so. would, you know, they would stop and get whatever the groceries they wanted. And that, that which, was smart of them. Which brings up another story about the boxing match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You going to tell it? <coughs> we were just watching Ali last night. I was thinking about that, um, that movie, Ali. Who was Joe that? Lewis against uh, Max Schmeling, I think. Yes, that's exactly it. Th that was a famous match back in, I don't know, early 30s, I guess. And everybody... Ma Max Schmeling was from Germany. Yeah. And uh, Joe Lewis was black man. They called him the, uh, black, the black bomber. You know, he was really... I think he's undefeated in his whole... Go oh, ahead. no, but Muhammad Ali beat Joe Lewis, didn't he? Mm -mm. No, mm -hmm. Joe Lewis was... They were was, different era. Yeah. Uh, so, word got around that they were going to have that on the radio at Papa's store, mm -hmm. and there weren't that many radios around. So, uh, there were a bunch of local people 
gathered in the store, and Papa said, we're going to save the batteries when I watch the beginning of the fight, because we're going to save the batteries. So we had no, no, that you got it mixed up. They, he didn't, he didn't say, the other guy s said to them, his, the, they had like a little competition, and he told them, baby, we're going to wait, because, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, there's not going to be any commotion until the fifth round or the sixth mm -hmm. round, mm -hmm. and sure enough, Joe Lewis came in. Knocked him down. For, I think it was the second first, round. First round. First round. round. <laughs> so yeah. Papa had the TV off during that, and so he missed the show. Papa had it off. No, the other on. guy missed the, the show. Enough? Yeah, Papa okay. had it on. Show. I got that wrong. In my Thank head. God, Dad. My Papa, my my Dad, you know, didn't. But the other the other guy lost out. Well, you know, I hate to rub it in when I'm right, but heavyweight boxers Muhammad <laughs> Ali and oh, I'm I was wrong. Al Lewis, <laughs> Al Lewis fought on 1972. Yeah, not Joe Lewis. <laughs> Joe Lewis was called the. Oops, uh, I was wrong. Black I'll admit it freely. And we haven't a date though. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Where are we? Oh, how Joe Lewis would have beaten Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Um. Let's go, let's, let's liven it up a little bit and talk about uh, the Call Girls. The Call Girls. The call, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Call Girls. Well, they, they lived in Buckman, <laughs> Minnesota, where I grew up. And uh, their last name was spelled K-A-H-L, but pronounced Call. And for young people watching this, Call Girl also means prostitute. Yeah. And right. No one says that anymore, but that, that was yeah. the thing. Back they, uh... So when my mother first used the term, the call girls, she thought dance hall girls. Right. Said, this call town girls? of Bookman, Minnesota of 180 people has call girls? I said, call girls? <laughs> yes, Janelle, call girls. <laughs> so, What's wrong with Janelle? She doesn't, she doesn't understand. So we had to interpret that. And, uh, Everybody laughed. I think that, that might be the end of the story, but. That, Everybody. That, that was often referred to. They had the call girls were not prostitutes. <laughs> they had a rule that um, a, a rule in I don't know if it was in his community or in his family. His family. That if you know the the oldest girl had to marry before the others would would go uh, courting, you know. And Sister Rosario was how do I say this? Um, well, anyway, she heard she heard them talking about her. You know, she was like sixteen, and they said, "Oh, if she's gonna have a, you're gonna have a hard time getting somebody to court her, be, you know, because she's not a very good looking girl." And so she heard that, and she went to be she went in the convent and became a nun because she thought that she was. Ugly, you know, and she would. See, I didn't meet her till she was in her seventies, probably, I but I always thought and she was I, good looking, good looking well, I lady. I thought she I mean, was she always a cute little didn't lady, seem and and she so was then the other two, you know, the other two, his sisters became nuns also. They've been addicted nuns. And that would have been Sister Julia and Hildegard. Sister Juliana. Well, it, we Sister call her Sister Julian. Julian. Yeah, Julian. that's right. And uh, so those were Sister three, three Sister three Hildegard. Counts. I don't believe we ever met, right? Was she? You probably met her. I'm sure you met her. I don't remember meeting her. Are you sure she didn't pass before me and Zoe mm -hmm. were? Maybe yeah, maybe we met her, but we didn't. Yeah, I wasn't old different. enough. I said, do you remember Sister Hildegard? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember Sister Julian. It was always the two. Unless there, she was mm -hmm. out of state or something. That yeah. Those were my dad's, uh, three of my dad's six sisters who were nuns. That's right. Uh, my dad was the second youngest of 11 kids. And uh, he grew up on a small farm about two miles south of Buckman, Minnesota, uh, which was about 30 miles north of St. Cloud, for those of you who might know the geography there. So what else is there? Good pick uh, one, yeah. Good story right in there. Emily's going to pick the next story. Okay. Um, beer tastes like Horse pee? <laughs> the what? That was that was Mary Lou's uh, grapefruit wine. 
We were oh, at, yes. oh, I thought it was beer. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, yes. I remember that so See, well. We went over there for, for Easter or something like that. and, and uh, Mom had just met yes, the Zinners. I was so just met the Zinners about and she was being thinking they were very accepting and, yeah. conservative. And, they, and what it is, is during, for, for Christmas, uh, Galen came with a, with a, um, a, a suit and tie. And Mary Lou and all of them were all dressed up. And we, you know, we went to the camp. You know, and, and our thing, we didn't dress up for, you know, so I thought, oh my goodness. Did Daddy have a suit and tie? Uh, did huh? you wear a suit and tie? I probably did. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, it was, you know, so I thought, oh my goodness, this, this family's, and so. So proper. So, <laughs> Mary Lou had made some wine with, was it? Grapefruit. Grapefruit. And so, they all served this thing, and so, <laughs> Galen said, Mary Lou, this tastes like horseshit. Horsefish. Horsefish. Horse horse <laughs> I thought Grandma would have a fit. You know, and I just got the biggest. I thought, this is not a high class family. This is, you know, uh, I belong here. <laughs> yeah, I belong it's not here. high class. It's not high I class. belong. You know, it was high so, class, just not she, proper. She was so embarrassed, you know, that. that <laughs> so Galen is, is Grandpa's. Brother, yeah, who right. passed away like a year before Zoe was born, I believe. Mm -hmm. 71? He was in 72. He, he was born in die. June of 72. He died in January of 72. Well, I mean, Six months in... before. And then Faye died in 71? No. It's the other side of the family. Well, so. it could have been 71. No, Faye died. It was died around then. In the 60s, because that was. 60. Uh... For your, were y'all married yet? Did Faye mm -hmm. go to your wedding? Because I was 69. No, no Faye didn't. No. So it was late 60s. But within two or three years, yeah. they had her sister pretty much, her da her brother's wife, who was like her sister, mm -hmm. and his brother passed away right before mm -hmm. we were both born. Mm -hmm. Family history, which is what this is about. Mm -hmm. What's next, Emily? Kidnapping. Oh. Kidnapping. This kidnapping. is uh, your first date. What? Oh, first date kidnapping. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh. Who's they, first kidnapped they kidnapped you to, you to the, take you to Charlie the party. Brown party. Oh, that, <laughs> to the that, what party? Well, not your first date. When, the, when, the night y'all met. San Antonio when they had the When your friends party. put a bag over your head and, and drug you to the party where you met this Did you guy. Oh, yeah. Her? Okay. All right. Yeah. They, so how's that story go? Well, well you were, were all lined up to go to a, a party that was closer to the to the university there, a lady of the lake in San Antonio. Yeah. And... Uh, they said, no, we're not going to that party. We're going to the Army party. Uh, she said that Our Lady of the Lake was near three Air Force bases in San Antonio. And Port Sam, where I was stationed, was... was uh, uh, Army. Yeah, that's an Army base. And there was a, an apartment party where I was staying. It was sp sponsored by my roommates. We, we had four women, and so we had, had this party. It was an... It was a gone away part because the next day I left for home to start graduate school. And so Terry was sitting at the table and we were cleaning up. So I, I'll never forget this. And I looked down and I said, what's your name? He said, Terry Zenner. I said, where are you from? He said, Minnesota. I said, Yankee. He said, I'm no Yankee. Everybody keeps calling me a Yankee. I'm not Yankee. I'm from Minnesota. I said, listen, anybody north of, uh, of Alexandria is a Yankee. And not in this time, he went, oh, well, I'm glad you told me that. <laughs> See, I didn't even know where Alexandria was. <laughs> Wasn't it the Mason-Dixon line? Anybody north of That's the Mason-Dixon line? That's closer to but, it. But if you live in South Louisiana, Louisiana, it was anyone north of I-10. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But, but, to, but to go back to the kidnapping, you're... you're Roommates or friends drug you to the party because yes. you said you weren't going to go, so they. Yeah, they drug me, and I wouldn't have never met my future forcibly my, took my, you my, to my the party. Future husband, I would have never met him. Thank God for kidnappers. Yes, thank God. <laughs> yes. And then while we're on that, like right there, um, yeah, tell the story of your your dating. You know, before you went off. I'll give away the story, but I don't know where to go with that one. I don't either. I, I had... Uh, well, what was the next step? Y'all met at this party, then what? He asked me out. Mm -hmm. we, 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 I asked if, if she would write to me when I was in Vietnam, because yeah. I was right. about to leave. So they Vietnam. had one date, as I was trying to get you yeah. to say, but they had one date, and then he was shipped off to Vietnam. And she and, learned that I couldn't dance. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and I always said I was never going to marry a man that couldn't dance. And 
Poor, poor thing, he tried. <laughs> <laughs> and he got much better. <laughs> he tried, they, they could differ. But, yeah. So anyway, they had one date, and then Grandpa uh, asked her to uh, write to him, and yeah. she agreed. And I did, and she sent me a couple letters, and I... Uh, Bless you. Then it was a, a good while before I got a third letter, and I wrote her back, and I said, what happened? And I thought, you were going to write to me. And she wrote back, I have been writing to you. What, what are you talking about? Long story short... My mother cut, cut them off in Minnesota because <laughs> that's the only address I had to give her from San Antonio. I wasn't stationed in Vietnam yet. And she said, and, I, I bet she said, I don't want him dating, going with this girl from Louisiana. That's far away, you know. If, 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 he, would, if he wouldn't have sent me this, it was the back of an envelope. And, if, you know, and it, uh, that's how she, you know, back of an envelope. And it had our, my address and his address. And it said, why haven't you written me? And I said, I, I have written you. I've, you know, so I wrote back, you know, to to him and said, I have written to you, you know, and and it was Grandma that said, I don't want him dating this girl from Louisiana. So I wrote my mother. I said, I don't, I don't remember what I said, but basically it must have been, you know, release the stash. <laughs> <laughs> the so then, at some point, y'all started reel to reel in each other, right? Yeah. Yeah, What's we that? still have those. So yeah, we open, still have open. I have to show Emily what a reel to reel looks like. We still mm -hmm. got it, right? Yeah, I think it's right there. You probably seen it. It's a, it's like a reel of, of tape, like an old audio cassette, but it's on a reel, and it goes from one reel to the other, and then the thing in the middle re reads it and and turns it into audio. It's just like an audio cassette. So we're talking little reels, not the one big. Oh, not yeah. the one you described. The one, the reels on the the reel to reel were like this. Well, yeah. the the reel itself was eyes, but the but the Let's holder was. Quick. Where is it? Not right now. I don't like. Yeah, I don't think I. They're, they're, it's not that easy to find. Well, they're in your attic, not in your attic, but, in your closet. But, but he's got. If you're interested in that, him, he's got some some reel to reels that he was sending to mom, mom and other people, where you can hear bombs blasting in the background. He's in Vietnam, and you could hear he's talking and. You hear like bombs going off in the background and stuff. And, and I'll pretty, never forget pretty intense we, we, uh, we stuff. Were, when he was coming back, you know, and I, uh, to he, he he stopped. You know, when he got back, he he stopped in New Orleans uh, to see me first, and then go home. You know, and that, my dad was really, con you know, you, you gonna let that Yankee come? I said, Daddy, we're really serious, and boy, he he didn't like that. So I picked him up at the airport. And we went, you know, uh, where did we go? To the farm. To the farm. And, uh, they, you know, they met him. They thought he was a nice man, but he's from Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. I sent her flowers for, for Christmas to, oh, yeah. to a friend that was going to San Francisco. And he packaged them up and sent them to Abbeville. And they went, happened to go to um, Uncle Irby's sister had a floor, floor shop. She got the order. She mm -hmm. got the order. She packaged up these nice red roses. Yeah, and, and I'm uh, sitting in the la living room, you know, and all of a sudden I see this my my first, you know, the, my first cousin coming, and all of a sudden the, uh, it was all my aunts and uncles following, not not all, but like three or four mm -hmm. cars, and I thought, <laughs> what is going on? And it was because they had, you know, she had intercepted the letter, and. You know, they were all coming to see who it was from. Yeah. They had to know. <laughs> Got to be in the know at Abbeville. Entourage. Entourage is right. So see, nowadays you just post it on Facebook and everyone see it. Back then they had to follow them in a car. And <laughs> they had to write actual letters back and forth. <laughs> I, so we still have the letters. I mean, yeah. I mean, think about it. We was so um, he was German descent. I was French. He went to all to. You know, Catholic school. I went to Catholic school. He went to the seminary. I went to the convent. Uh, you know, we, we. He was a theology major. You taught church history, right? right? <laughs> I mean, there was just so many things that we were, you know, really. We, yeah, we're, we, I, we I, were I, I want to keep going on this one. Y'all were both hippies who were virgins and didn't do drugs. That's right. Both so, I mean, that's children, the one that blows me away. <laughs> both the youngest children with 10 years apart. You know, yeah. From, okay. next, next sibling was 10 years older. Mm -hmm. Well, for in my case, my sister was seven years older, mm -hmm. but, my and then my brother was ten years older. It was just so, so much in common. I mean, it's like we were growing up on the same, with the same script. You know, he, he, the, the, the catechism was almost the same. We all 
and taught by the he was taught by the Benedictines. I was taught by the Carmelites, but they all, you know, had the same Baltimore Catechism. Yeah, the Baltimore Catechism. Nationwide, approved by the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> so, and my, they they were all you know, and I was tw in my I was twenty five, 20, and they were all concerned I was going to be an old maid, and they they even kept saying. We don't have any old maids. And I'd say, well, if I don't find what I want in a man, we are, I'm going to be an old maid. And she'd look at my dad and she said, you're going to let her you know, say that? And he said, well, I can't stop her from saying it. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> So I'm glad that I found this man. He's a very, 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 very good man. What's next, Em? You got any stories there? Mm -hmm. See the old hen? I know you wanted to do that one. Mom. Oh, it's the old hen story. A what? The old hen story. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I'll never live this one down. <laughs> we, were, we, we went to Minnesota and uh, to you know to meet his parents, and um, Daddy just gave me a stern warning. You know, he said, you know, Terry Zinner has been a sport. He eat everything that we put before him. So whatever they put before you, you know, you eat whether you like. And I was so concerned about sauerkraut. I mean, come on. Uh, you know, sour, crowd sour. So we went. Uh, what was what was my point? Well, we've gone to the. Uh, you're in the yeah. same story, but a different, very different. Oh yeah. So same trip, different said, story. So I old said, hen. Oh, this is really. I said this is such a good um, chicken noodle soup. chicken noodle soup. And she said it takes an old hen. I said, oh, you're not that old. You know, I never, I never, I'll brew that one. <laughs> <laughs> she literally meant it takes an old hen. <laughs> um, all right, so who wants to tell the Tonchu story? Tonchu. Well, I can tell that. Okay, good. Speak up just a little bit, Dad. All right. Well, uh, I moved, I came from Vietnam, stopped in Abbeville, went to Minnesota, and, uh, Came back to live, work at the, the Red Cross in New Orleans, and uh, I learned quickly that, that the thing to do on a Saturday afternoon, such as today, was watch the LSU game, and they had big parties everywhere. There was a party, so we went to the local apartment uh, where Janelle was staying, and had <laughs> uh, there was a party there. And Byron was there, and her parents were there, and uh, my aunts and uncles. It was a big. It was a Tulane LSU game. It was a big game. But go ahead. So uh, I was making the rounds, and introducing myself, and being introduced, and uh, Byron. Byron cornered <laughs> me, and he said, uh, "You, you want to learn a, a good uh, Cajun." Toast. Expression? To toast. 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 You I, wanted a good toast because the yeah, Germans I was, toast. You I wanted saying, a good toast. And prosit and prosit der gemütlichkeit. That's a German uh, toast. <laughs> and he said, I'll teach you a French one. And I said, well, how's that go? He said, it's very simple. Just talk to <laughs> I said, okay. So went around the room. So <laughs> as he goes that to, to my family, going around, he's going to talk to and they would go, and then they'd smile, you know. Taught you, Terry. Taught you. So, <laughs> so I finally, I go over there and I said, what are you saying to them? He said, taught you, Janelle. And I said, this is what you told my family? He said, yes. I said, you know what you said? I said, he said, what? I said, your ass. He went, oh. Your ass. Here's to your ass. <laughs> your ass, Terry. <laughs> How to win friends and influence enemies. I'm what did Byron say? What did you say to Byron? Oh, yeah. That seems so much like a Brit thing, not a Byron yeah, thing. But he enjoyed that, I'm sure. <laughs> unless, you, unless your tailgates turn you into something different. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's the Taunt Shoe story. It's one of our favorites. <laughs> um, <coughs> what are, Did we miss any stories from there? Charlie? Oh, I, I don't even know a Charlie story. I just wanted y'all to tell a well, Charlie story just that was, for the um, history of it all. That was Charlie. about Is it Mr. Charlie. A, a oh, God? yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Terry, when Terry came, you know, uh, to Louisiana I mean, to, kind of, to, to visit with me, uh, he said, uh, we, you know, when, when well, let's do it this way. He said, um, 
here we just name you know each other, and I said that's fine. But I said, and here we go, Mr. Charlie, and Mr. You know, Mr. Paul, you know, as, out of respect. So, <laughs> so he said okay. So finally, we, we, I was going to go up to Louisiana to, to Minnesota. He said, now you're going in my territory, and he said, you don't say Mr. Charlie, you say Charlie. I said, oh no, Terry. I said, my dad would have a fit calling a man that's 50 years old, Charlie. He said, look, I did it your way. Now you're going to do it my way. I said, okay, all right. <laughs> well, Charlie, you know, Charlie is just the most loving man. So I, I forget this. I, I, you know, I was talking to him and I said, Charlie. And he just looked at me. And, you, you know, usually if you do that in Louisiana, you know, the older person would just look at it and say, who in the hell do you? And he said, what? You know, what, what's, what you want? And I went, God, it worked. <laughs> you know, I just couldn't believe it. You skipped the answer to that. Yeah, it, you know, this Mr. and Mrs. didn't go over in Minnesota. That's still floating around down here, though. It's old yeah. Mr. They call me. Well, I mean, like our neighbor from across the street, Miss Sandy. I can't even imagine calling her Sandy, <laughs> but like your sister Mary Lou, I can't imagine her calling her Miss Mary Lou or <laughs> oh, Aunt Mary Lou, maybe. But yeah, you just adapt it's to the different. Culture, like, you know? It's just yeah, it's culture. so different. Um. What were the other uh, culture shocks, Mom? Um, oh, um, I know you had to get adjusted to the cold. I, there, there's some stories I've heard that you, uh, you would well tell them how you would keep us from crying when we would cry when you were in Minnesota, because Zoe and I were in Minnesota when we were babies, and we moved. She was two Gee, and a half. I was one. How did I keep you from crying? Well, this, as I've been told, you had two ways. Number one, you would. Someone relative had told you to put a little bourbon in there. Oh, yeah. Right. That, that was Grandma Zander. Grandma Brandy. Grandma Brando. Grandma, Brando, on the, on the, Grandma Brando is the, your um, great, 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 no, great, great grandma. Yeah. Grandma for you. She thought to be 99 and three quarters. Yeah. But so, yeah, she, she taught her to put a little brandy in her in her drink <laughs> and then breastfeed and then kids out. <laughs> Done. Clipped. <laughs> and the other one you said was uh, when it was really cold out. And I was crying. There was me, not Zoe Moore, because I was like colicky. I cried a lot. And you'd take me outside. It was so cold, I couldn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget, uh, you know, I, so I had brought some, um, I hadn't brought the proper boots. So Mary Lou gave me some, some you know, boots from the Delahanties. I mean, they have six kids. So I put the boots on, and they had a hole in it. And I wasn't going to say, these have a hole in it, but we out, went on the snow and the snow got in, inside, and I didn't want to complain. But to this day, that it, it it's it, you know, I get cold, cold. It's still, you know, I, I and so Terry said, "Why didn't you tell me?" I said, "Well, I didn't want to say, you know, you got a hole in the in your boot that you gave me. You know, I, you know, I just went. It's not going to be that cold. Well, it was that cold. God damn." Papa had a saying: "Beggars can't be choosers." That's right. And that I learned that from him. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll wrap it up here. What uh, what memories do y'all have of like the first time you went to see Emily? That would have been in New Orleans at her mom's house. Um, I had only at that time I had only seen her maybe six, seven times. It was within the first month, and I think y'all saw her when she was like a month old, maybe. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't by lack of desire. Trust me, this was the first time we were able to set up. A visit where your mom allowed it and all that jazz. So, and she was in our, her apartment where we right. Visited. She she did agreed to go get her hair and nails done, and the Zinners piled in to visit the little one. Mm -hmm. We had pictures of that day. Well, think about it. She was our only grandchild. She is our only grandchild. Yep. Yeah. So we, you know, we couldn't believe how, you know, she was so cute. Mm -hmm. Still is cute. And we were so proud of her. Mm -hmm. Um, any other stories? I think we, we're good to wrap it up. Yeah. What about the African prince story? The African prince. Oh, when y'all dressed up, uh, you went to the Mexican uh, restaurant? The segregation in the San Antonio? Oh, oh, yeah. There, there was this, um, there was, this was a time of segregation when they didn't allow, they weren't serving blacks. And, uh, I went to a Catholic, uh, university, Alley of the Lake, and, uh, it all started my my interview my thing. I had a black friend, and she was not black. She was what she called honeydew brown. So <laughs> we we went we went into this restaurant, and they said we don't serve colored people. 
and she 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 was really she she put up her arm next to the waitress and she was lying. She said, "What color would you prefer?" And so <laughs> the lady said, the, the waitress said, um, you know, the owner said, "I'm sorry, but we can't serve blacks." I said, "Well, that's not the last that you heard of this, you know." So I went back to to the lake and the uh, the um, the nun. the, the uh, head nun. Mother mistress. The mother, well, it was the, there was the nun there. The, I was going to say the um, something for women. Anyway, she was there, and I told her about it. And she said, well, what do you want to do? I said, I'd like to boycott, and I'd like your, your backing. She said, you have 100%. She said, I, you, you know, we'll tell, we'll tell the uh, girls that if they want to enter the boycott, we'll, we'll, and it was like, we was walking distance. It was like six blocks away. So she, we wrote a letter saying, you know, for, unless you uh, uh, serve our students, we will not, we will not participate. And you, we go to your thing. And so when they would start to go, go, I, you know, we would, those that were organized, we'd say, where the hell are you going? We're going there. And said, no, you're not. They're, we're boycotting it, you know. And so finally, they wrote us a letter and said, you may come and we will serve you. We have, right. you know. But in the meantime, you had the, the guy that you dressed up. Oh, yeah. That's the story we were getting at. I mean, that was good background. And I wanted to know, did they become segregated? Or was this place always segregated and y'all just wanted to bust it? Or did it yeah. one day say, we're going to be segregated? No, no, it, was already, it was already so segregated. As far as, you, as far as you remember, that place was always segregated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. This was the time when, they, you know, that was... Everything was segregated. Yeah. yeah. Everything was segregated. But they didn't. But at a certain time, there was no segregation. Like segregation so, didn't no. start until like the fifties. His, his right? name was oh, no. William. Forties. William. No, I mean, there, no. What did, I mean, not that it wasn't things weren't separated, but there wasn't a blacks and a whites because like. What do you call separated? Things well, there was a, separated before that. <laughs> no, I'm saying there there was an actual time when they separated things and called it segregated, colored people over here, and yeah, it wasn't right. always like that before that. Like. Well, his name was William. And uh, he, he, we, we had the whole thing planned. And we went, he went in to get in. They said, we don't serve, we don't serve blacks. And uh, I remember he said to them, what, what color would you prefer? And uh, so we walked out. Then he went and got dressed in this real n nice, uh, it was a, he was like an African prince. We got this hat for him, you know, and this coat, you know. And so, uh, uh, it wasn't the same day. It was the next day. He went and they served him because they we said they said he was an African prince, and so they you know oh they served him everything and then we took a picture of him before you know during the night and after and said this you, this uh, restaurant uh, serves an African prince but will not serve an American citizen. Oh burn burn. <laughs> and so Say they wrote, so they wrote us and said that they no longer. We're segregating, you know. Cause That's how you bust segregation. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so the last story is I wanted you to tell a little bit about your uh, your grandpa who was the gambler or the tr the, the trader, right? Trader. No, not trader. The Re trader. He would he trade like stuff. Trade like he traded a house. Oh. He traded a horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, and then he traded my a gimp horse and got back another gimp horse. Yeah, that he? was my dad's dad. And he just loved to, tr to trade, you know. He, and one time he he had this horse that uh, that that daddy really liked, and he he was coming home and he saw this night. He said, "You have a nice horse." You know, he said, "You want to trade?" He said, "Yeah." They traded. <laughs> <laughs> he just loved. The, you but know. didn't both men think they were giving the other guy a yeah, gimp oh, horse? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they both got back a gimp horse. That's right. yeah. Gimp means um, they, they, what's that? Crippled. Is Crippled or, or not? They're yeah. not. They're not a good workhorse. Yeah, There's something right. wrong with them. Yeah. But he loved he loved to, to do that. He loved to um to trade. You know, loved to get something better. He thought. I never met him because he died when my dad was only seventeen. You know? hmm. My grandma had fourteen children, eight of which survived. You know, uh, she had mis you know she miscarried. Uh, it was all done by a midwife. They they didn't go, you know, they didn't go to the doctor. So you know, think about that. All you know, she, she had uh, eight. She survived eight and had. She died. The others died in childbirth, or at, soon after. That's why, you know, I'm so happy 
that Dr. Maladu came when, when I was born, and he his specialty was pre, uh, prenatal children, you know, like, like me. I was born 2 pounds, 13 ounces. And if it wouldn't have been for him, I, you know, that camp clinic, I would have died. And, and then my mom, her, or, well, my mama, her mom almost died, Emily, in childbirth, and uh, mm -hmm. and she had to get on uh, blood. And back then was before, like, the way I understood it, it was, correct me if I'm wrong, but this was before you put blood in the bag. I mean, maybe they did that, but in mm -hmm. this instance, they, they, they found she had that such a rare she had a rare type. blood, she and there was only type. one guy in town who had the blood, and he was this real funny, That's sassy Bob guy. Yeah. And they put the needle in her, and it went straight into from him to her, he right? He said, take yeah. as much as you need. And he yeah. said, take as much, but, but the, my point is, that's yeah. before, like, the blood, they, they set the pump, and it took directly from his arm and put it directly yeah, into her. exactly. And he said, take as much as you need. Because and AB, then, AB negative was very, mm -hmm. I have B negative, but AB negative was even more. There was only, that we knew of, was Anclitis, and, it was in the family, it was Anclitis, and I think it was the brother, that had B negative blood, but Bob Sion, who is not Ken, but he knew the real well. He's Kanai. Daddy used to say he's Kanai, mm -hmm. and he said when he gave blood, he said, did, "Did you get enough to save this lady?" And the guy said, "No, but we." Knew. He said, "He said, well, take as much. I'm healthy. Take as much as you need, you know." And so, uh, when he when he died, um, I saw to it that his wife visit his wife and get her flowers and stuff and visit her because he saved my mother's life and he always told papa that my mom oh, yes. got spunkier <laughs> and more sassy after that day because of his blood yeah, so right. you know your wife is he said, sassier I, now he, he, because he of my blood he did another story and said notice joe how your wife is getting spunky and she's spunky and she's sassy he said she got that from it's my blood <laughs> <laughs> all right any other stories y'all can think of Ooh, okay, I don't want to make this too long, and we yeah. got a, we got an LSU game to finish the end of here. So we're gonna. What did you want to say, honey? No, it's a lifetime story. So I know, but we, we're gonna we'll time. do this again. Mm -hmm. Sure, we'll do this again. Well, thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate everyone for that. That was fun. <laughs> Enjoyed it.